Hi, my name is Claire Ryan. I'm the coordinator of the Midwest Invasive Plant Network and of the Woody Invasives of the Great Lakes or Wiggle Collaborative. Today I'll be talking to you a little bit about the invasive vine porcelain berry right behind me here. It's sometimes also called Amer pepper vine. The Latin name is Ampelopsis brevipedunculata. A synonym that you may hear is Ampelopsis glandulosa, subspecies brevipedunculata. Say that five times fast. I'll tell you briefly about this species history and current status in North America, why it's invasive, and then we'll take a look at how to identify it in the field. Porcelain berry is native to Northeastern Asia, including Japan, the Korean Peninsula, Eastern China, and Siberia. It was brought to North America in the late 1800s for ornamental use. Today it occurs outside of cultivation all along the Eastern seaboard of the US and occasionally in the Midwest as well is most commonly reported in southern New England, the Mid-Atlantic, and southern Wisconsin, but it might be underreported due to its similarity to native grape species. It's likely hardy to zone five, and we may see it spread north further into the Great Lakes region with climate change. Porcelain berry occurs most readily in disturbed, semi-open or open habitat, like woodland edges, riparian areas, old fields, and rights of way. It prefers moist, rich soils, and spreads over distance by birds eating the fruit and by running water. It spreads locally through vegetative growth and growth from fragments. Now let's take a look at how to identify the species and tell it apart from close lookalikes. Porcelain berry is a climbing or rambling woody stem vine. When a suitable vertical surface is available as it is here, it climbs through the use of tendrils. The young, non-woody stems are lightly hairy. There is a native Ampelopsis species that you may found in, find in the south or southeast and even in the lower Midwest, but it doesn't have hairy new growth. Younger woody stems have obvious white pores on the bark called lenticels. Grape vines don't have lenticels. Finally, mature woody stems have light to medium brown bark with deep furrows that follow the direction of the vine. The bark doesn't peel. That's a key difference between porcelain berry and native grape species whose bark is generally not deeply furrowed, but does tend to peel in long strips. The leaves of porcelain berry are alternately arranged and are quite variable in shape. For example, this leaf here has three lobes and is quite typical of what you might expect a grapevine to look like. Then this leaf has five lobes and very deep sinuses and that give it a unique shape um, that is unique to porcelain berry. The leaves uh, maybe asymmetrical or symmetrical. They are toothed along the edges, and as you can see, the leaf color is typically a medium green. Flowers emerge in midsummer. They're small and green, born in clusters, and aren't terribly conspicuous. The fruits, which ripen in the fall, are quite unique. They're born in upright clusters and come in many shades of blue, violet, turquoise, green, and white. Grapevine fruits, if they're present, are either green when they're unripe or dark purple when they're ripe, and hang in dangling clusters instead of being upright. If you have porcelain berry on your property, we do recommend that you remove and replace it because it is considered to be an early detection species in most of the Great Lakes region. Established populations are quite difficult to manage because the plants will regrow unless the root system is completely destroyed. American bitter Sweet Celestris scandens is a possible replacement for porcelain berry that is also a climbing vine and has colorful fall fruit. However, make sure you get that plant from a trusted nursery. Native virgin's bower, Clematis virginiana, has late summer and early fall flowers and interesting seed heads, but don't substitute sweet autumn clematis because that's also at risk of becoming invasive. To learn more about control techniques for porcelain berry and alternatives, check out our website, woodyinvasives.org, and please subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this one.